Hello and welcome to Bloodline, the taxonomy of fear, where we break down what, if anything, makes a movie scary. I am Jordan Crociola. And I'm Jay Dayrit. And uh, today we're going to take a look at Mark Tondurai's House at the End of the Street. House at the End of the Street stars not one, but two Oscar nominees. Jennifer Lawrence for her role in Winter's Bone, not yes. her role in Hunger Games. Yes, and Elizabeth Shue for her role as a prostitute in Leaving Las Vegas. Greedy prostitute. Yeah. And uh, Gil Bellows, who was from TV's Ally McBeal. Mm -hmm. You were probably 12 when that was on the air. <laughs> I think about that, yeah. And alongside them, Max Terriot of the upcoming show Bates Motel on a &E, and also Gap Model as a youngin. I think I prefer the Gap Model credit. What defines psychological horror? Does House at the End of the Street fit that bill? Mm -hmm. First criteria I'm going to say, empathy-based fear in a psychological horror movie. We want to care about the lead character, so we care about what happens to them. Mom, this is beautiful. As good as Jennifer Lawrence is, and she's great, she actually pulls off a great performance, mm -hmm. considering the kind of, you know, middling nature of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but I really, I cared about what happened to her. Movie not so good. I'm going to say it didn't quite satisfy the empathy-based the empathy-based criteria. We follow her around, we're not, but we don't super She care. had a little bit of a personality disorder. She yeah. would just like blurt out everything she said, and she was super nosy, which yeah. was really off-putting. Yeah, I couldn't really buy that she was a total innocent in the yeah. whole thing. Number two, justifiable motivation of the antagonist. It has to be something not too outlandish that actually is kind of relatable, like if it happened to us, maybe I, maybe I could become a homicidal maniac if that happened to me. Yeah, no, not here to judge. I felt like the villain's motivation in this movie was really weak. It kept, they kept sort of unfolding and pulling these layers back as to what the motivation was, but eventually it just turned out to be creative indecision and the end was totally predictable. Why is Ryan Jacobson still living there? What exactly happened there? His parents were murdered and his sister disappeared. Do you hear something? Speaking of scary, this psychological horror category, attention-based kind of fear. The, the scares lie in that anxiety that builds up mm -hmm. to that kind of final fight or chase, whatever the crescendo is. Yes. But the meat of the movie, the payoff, is kind of secondary to that anxiety you feel the whole time for that protagonist you're supposed to be empathizing mm -hmm. with. And in the case of this movie, uh, it was a little too stilted and a little too much of a patchwork for me to yeah. really get into that buildup. Which of relates to number four, yeah. the least gory. It was there was not a drop of blood in this entire movie. Like, it was weird. It was weird. People were getting stabbed, no blood. There was maybe the goriest thing was maybe like a second degree burn. Yeah, clean to the point of unbelievable. Like if yeah. I got smacked in the face like mm -hmm. like happens in this movie, I, I would have you know a lip bleeding. She was or a little something. too pretty throughout yeah. the whole movie. Stunning, really. Yeah. 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 And number five. Uh, for psychological horror, the, the protagonist or the victim has to emerge victorious and free from whatever kind of physical or emotional or psychological entrapment that they are mm -hmm. suffering. And that happens in this movie. Yeah. They, they end up, they, end up uh, they take vengeance and, and they end up free. Uh, kind of the mother-daughter relationship, they find a bond there, which yeah. works as nothing. Nothing bonds mother and daughter like uh, facing a serial killer. Yeah, no. Yeah. We, we bond under the most extreme of circumstances. So it was it was kind of successful and it sort of fit the bill, but ultimately yeah. not all that scary. It movie. had the tropes, but it didn't set itself apart enough in the very homogenous horror genre yes. to, to kind of to kind of give you the, the creeps and the crawlies throughout the movie. It exactly. just sort of fell a little flat. It had flat. the tropes, but not the actual successful combination. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just had them all. If there's anything redeeming about the least redeeming genre of movies, it is the survival lessons that you perhaps can learn. Number one. Number one, if the house is affordable, there's a reason for it. Mm -hmm. Serial killer, pedophile, black mole, leaky pipe, don't move in. Mm -hmm. Number two, trust the town skeptic. They might seem crazy, but they've been there a while, they know some stuff. Yes. Number three, your mom may have been a drunk slut in high school, but listen to her. She's been around the block a few times in one way more or another. So just listen to her advice. Take it. Number four, you are not your child's friend. You are their parent. Set some rules. Enforce them. Mm -hmm. I do not want the two of you to be alone in this house. And number five, to quote the very wise Kelly Clarkson, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Kelly doing her homework there, quoting some Friedrich Nietzsche who came before her on that mm, one. I'm going to go with Kelly Clarkson. Jay, any? Uh, 30 minutes mostly because I was really pissed that the, that the preview was so deceptive. What mm -hmm. they promised was a different movie. 
And I'm going to say maybe maximum 45 minutes because if I were a 16-year-old girl trapped in a house, that's generally terrifying, but nothing really specifically related to the movie. Mm, yeah. Yeah. My pick is Pascal Legere's Martyrs. Actually, no, I'm not going to recommend that movie because the second half of the movie is so brutal and so horrible. So let's go with Jordan's pick. I'm going to go with Spiral, a cool little independent creepy movie from 2007. Eerie, similar kind of protagonist, dealing with a similar kind of creepy antagonist guy. Just to really check it out. Art house film, eerie, gets into your skin kind of thing. <laughs> So that's it for this episode of Bloodline. We'll be back in a couple weeks with hopefully a scarier movie. Mm -hmm. uh, email us with any questions, comments, concerns at bloodline at wired.com. We'd love to hear from you. And as we like to say here at Bloodline, remember, it's, it's just, just a, a movie. movie.